There were so many things that I didn't know about overseas basketball. But hey, now that I've played in multiple countries as an overseas pro, I can share and explain overseas basketball to you. What's going on everyone? It's your boy Dez360, former overseas pro hooper, tuning in, providing you with that motivational and inspirational content to help supercharge your grind, your vibe, your journey. We're gonna get right into it today, guys. I am gonna talk to you and I'm going to explain overseas basketball things that I wish I knew, uh, but hey, you get to benefit from these things and let's jump right into it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, whether you're trying to play overseas, start your career, looking for the next team, whether you're in college right now and just wanna know what steps you can take, whether you don't have any college offers, whether you're not playing at college, whether you just are playing pickup at home, I think that there's an opportunity to play overseas basketball if you want it enough. So let's start here, guys. Did you know that there are over 200 countries worldwide with registered professional basketball leagues? Let's do some math real quick. If there are 200 countries with registered leagues and some of these countries have three, four basketball professional leagues, I'm gonna do some mental math. It's safe to say that there are over 500 basketball leagues worldwide that you can play in overseas. That's a lot, that is a lot. But of course, there are millions and millions of hoopers, right? So how many of them are really dedicated, gifted, talented, or skilled, um, or hungry? I was hungry, because I wasn't highly recruited. How many are hungry to go out there and make their own opportunities? So we'll start there. So many countries, so many opportunities. Who's gonna reach out? Who's gonna get in contact? Who's gonna take that step? Maybe even go to that country and set up an opportunity for them to showcase their skills and abilities. You know, when you're going overseas, you have to remember, you're literally like going to a new land. You're going to a new country, a new place, somewhere that you haven't lived before. So there's so many, so many adjustments. There are so many adjustments when it comes to overseas basketball. So you have to be mentally prepared for that. Relocating to a new land means time difference, means food difference, means culture shock, means social differences. So many things. The one thing that stays the same is basketball. So touched upon that in multiple videos of mine, basketball is the key, but you have to be willing to make those sacrifices, uh, especially with, with your comfort zone and getting out of it. So if you are getting overseas looks, or if you're you know focusing on a specific country that you wanna play in, make sure to do a little research. Of course, when you're looking up the leagues, look up the time zones. How many hours uh, difference is it than where you currently live at? For example, when I went to the Philippines, that was a 14 hour time difference from LA and I did not even know that until I got there and realized it. So you gotta be proactive and that's quick, easy research that you can do. Hopefully you're enjoying this video. If you are, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Let's get right back to it. Additional research is also in the levels of overseas basketball. Did you know that there are various tiers of overseas basketball? Of course you have your, your main tier. We call that tier one and that includes you know, leagues such as EuroLeague, um, the CBA in China, KBL, which is in Korea, um, PBA. Like these are the, 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 in Australia, the NBL. These are the leagues that pretty much NBA caliber players go to play in, to get more opportunity, um, to get more playing time, to get that experience. So they pay the most. You can see contracts range from anywhere from, what, $60,000 a season to, 1.2 million dollars, you know, something like that. So what I mean is you can go from the high tens of thousands to million dollars for a season. That is tier one. That's where everyone aims to play at. Uh, in order to get there, as I mentioned, you need NBA type pedigree, NBA type resume, um, or you really have to work your way up. And that's why we're going to talk about these other tiers uh, in the professional basketball overseas world. The next tier is essentially, we call them the, the, the lower level tiers. Um, and that could be the second division, the third division, or even the fourth division in a country. And there's nothing wrong with that. You have to remember that you're going to a new world and you gotta establish your name. So if you want to play overseas basketball, you have to ask yourself, hey, am I okay with starting, starting small and then building my way up? You can jump up leagues literally within a couple years. 
I have friends that went out uh, to play in Europe or to play in Asia or to play in Mexico. And they started at the low level. They started at the, at the division four. They killed, they did their thing. They averaged 30, boom. The ne literally the next season, division one teams are like, hey, come play for us. Come play for, it's that, you know, you can jump up that, that quickly, that rapidly, if you're really doing your thing. So remember that it, at the end of the day, it is all basketball. And if you're proven and producing on the court, you can move up. And honestly, you gotta embrace those leagues because now you can use playing in those leagues. You can use that as leverage and building up as you build up your resume as a player. Right, so that's what I did. Played in Philippines. I didn't play in the, the highest division, PBA, uh, but I played in a slightly lower division and I, I got recruited by Mexico. So that's the game you gotta play. Um, as well as these basketball tiers, you should also look into, you know, what do you consider as overseas basketball? Check out my other videos. I literally have a video that speaks upon that. Um, but what I would say is, what are you looking for? Do you wanna go out overseas and train people and, and like have clinics and connect with people and have everything paid for and have a great experience? Because you can even use that and you might meet somebody out there who knows somebody that has a commercial league, um, that has a different league and you can play in there. So what is a commercial league? Commercial leagues are essentially, um, they're not official lower tiers. They are a step under the, for example, division three or division four professional league. Commercial leagues are um, semi-pro type leagues in, overseas. But the good thing about it is you can play in a semi-pro team, get scouted, boom, you're up. I actually played in a couple commercial leagues when I was in the Philippines. And um, one game I, I hit like six threes. Uh, I came off the bench and I hit six threes and like everyone was going crazy. And then after that, I got invited to go play in an island for a month and a half and they paid me thousands of dollars. And I was like, that's great. So you just wanna look at it. Just because it wasn't like an official FIBA contract doesn't mean that that wasn't an overseas basketball experience. If anything, it was way more fun and I got paid good money. So, hey, you gotta really look at those things. Commercial leagues that are ran and commercial leagues aren't, uh, they kind of go year round. They're random leagues. Hey, we have uh, this league and it lasts two months. Hey, and then after that, there's another commercial league ran by this brand. So that's why I say, I even know a friend that played like a three on three commercial league. And that was great because after that he got recruited and now he's in the PBA doing his thing. So I'm gonna stress that more and more. You really just want your foot in the door when it comes to playing overseas basketball. And if I would have known that when I was younger, that would have been really cool. <laughs> Another thing you wanna learn, if you have heritage, meaning for example, I'm Filipino and Mexican, may not look like it or maybe I do, but yes, that's my heritage. Now, had I known that when I was younger, for example, when I was 14 years old, I could have quickly received my documentation and become nationalized and then went and tried out for the national team. Because at certain ages, you can no longer, it's, it's a much difficult process, much more challenging process um, to apply and get in and then make the, the team. For the Philippines, it was 16 years old. So after 16, it's like very challenging to get on the national team. So for me, if I would have known that, I could have just easily got my documentation, boom, national team. Although I still was able to represent the Philippines when we traveled and we played in Chinese Taipei and we played against Mongolia and other teams, you just wanna be as proactive as possible. So you can easily do research, reach out to people in that league and figure out what documents you may need. Overseas basketball. Living in another country and playing the game you love. This is a huge milestone for any ambitious basketball player. But where do you start and how do you get your first contract? My name is Des360 and this is How to Play Basketball Overseas. I'm going to share with you exactly what I did to go from college bench warmer to overseas pro basketball player. Watch my full course now, only at des360.com. Another thing that you want to know, and I'm gonna explain about overseas basketball, is that the pay may vary. That simple. I mentioned tier one getting paid anywhere between 50,000, 60,000 to a million dollars. That's overseas basketball. And if you're producing, it's really based off of that. Then there's opportunity for sponsorships, uh, money outside of the actual contract. Brands might like you, modeling gigs. I did a lot of modeling gigs when I was in the Philippines, trying out and doing all that. Um, 
So basically you gotta be open with that. Maybe you're, and I say that in every video too, maybe you're getting paid a thousand bucks in the beginning, go drop 40, and next season you can get paid 5,000 bucks possibly, who knows, right? So just come to terms with that. If you're demanding like $10,000 every month off the rip, meaning without having anything established under your name, it's very challenging to do. It's not impossible, but you kind of want to get out there and show your face and do your thing on the court. That just adds more to your case, right? Adds more to um, the leverage that you have moving forward. Another thing about overseas basketball that I'm going to explain to you is the part where you're not on the basketball court. <laughs> the off court responsibilities. So when I went overseas, I thought, okay, I'm playing basketball and then afterwards they leave me alone and then I show up the next day and I play. It's not necessarily like that all the time. You may have a bunch of different events, whether it's working with uh, local charities, whether it's having clinics in various provinces, whether it's some type of promotional event, whether you get brand sponsorships that want you to show your face and do autograph signings, take photos, and, and other cool things like that. They might even want you on a game show. I mean, there are so many opportunities. I would say just to embrace them all and be ready with that. Be ready to, to jump in that spotlight because you go into another country, people embrace that um, and they want to like learn about you. They want to have fun. So don't kind of shy away from it or at least, at least be prepared to, to, you know, if you are going to decline, decline respectfully. But most of the time you want to engage and have fun because those are more followers, those are more supporters, those are more fans and people that are gonna be in your corner, especially if you are building up your resume. When you play overseas, there are two options. One option is, hey, you could be like, I'm staying in the Philippines for the next 20 years. I'm, I wanna play in the Philippines and I had that option, like stay here and just build up here. And there's nothing wrong with that. I have friends that are doing that. But there's the other option. I'm gonna play in the Philippines for a couple years and then I'm gonna go play in Mexico for a couple years. And then maybe after that, I'll get recruited by another country and another country. So there, is, there are so many ways to get it. So you have to understand that, okay, cool. I'm going out there and what do I wanna do? Do I wanna be a journeyman, play here, play there? Um, do I wanna stick in one country? So those are just things to consider and when it comes to overseas basketball. And I'm really glad I get to explain that to you guys. So. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Hopefully you can enjoy and take some type of golden nuggets from this. As I mentioned on my online course, I dive deeper into it. I am pushing out a bunch more of exclusive content there. So stay tuned. That's a des-360.com. But of course, I'm also going to put out this free content for you and just give you, you know, the bare, uh, simple, you know, easy to understand concepts of basketball overseas. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Des360 Overseas Pro. Hey guys, maybe I should make a comeback. What do you think? <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Peace.